Hey there folks, Rel here. Today we'll be talking about what the best infantry weapon purchases are for newer players in Planicide 2. And I want to say best with sort of finger quotes because in this game, really everything comes down to personal preference and what you enjoy. So if you want to label anything as best, you'd need context. And the context for this video is to do a few different things for newer players. The first is that we want to share weapons which work best in the hands of the average new player. We also want to give you more options to defend yourself with based on the situation. And lastly, we want to try to keep things as economical as possible, so give you the biggest bang for your buck. You should not, however, be hounding weapons as a priority. Most of this stuff should be considered after you've already made substantial upgrades to your suit, ability, and tool slots. This guide is for people who are already considering spending certifications on weapons and not the other way around. That said, we'll break things down by class, faction, and type, and offer up a short explanation as to why it may be useful to you. One of the first items that I suggest unlocking is a ground-to-air lock-on launcher. So the grounder for the TR, the hawk for the NC, and the nemesis for the VS. By default, you have very little anti-air capabilities as a new player, and having a ground-to-air lock-on will let you scare away enemy aircraft either by letting them know that they're getting locked onto, or by actually doing some good damage to them. Now the Empire-specific ground-to-air lock-on launchers all have dumbfire modes built in, so you can use them against ground vehicles as well. Lock-on launchers won't work in all situations, especially in more confined areas with a lot of cover, but the ability to threaten enemy aircraft is a pretty big deal. Since lock-on launchers don't work in every circumstance though, we need to utilize the max unit to deal with anti-air in a lot of different situations. But since we only have access to one burster arm by default, picking up the other burster arm is a good idea. One burster basically tickles enemy aircraft and it's not a big enough threat to push away the larger vehicles, but if you get two bursters, you can do considerable amounts of damage and help you set up that area of denial. For infiltrators, your XM-98 for the VS and your M77B for the TR are your lowest cost bolt action sniper rifles, and if you do enjoy sniping, they're definitely worth a purchase. NC start with a bolt action by default, whereas VS and TR start out with semi-auto sniper rifles. And sniping is much easier to do, not to mention learn, with a bolt action in hand than it is with a semi-auto. That's due to the higher damage and the lower exposure time. If you want a close quarters place down for your infiltrator and have the added benefit of crossing over to every other infantry class you have access to, you may want to pick up an SMG. I'd suggest the Armistice for the TR, the Blitz for the NC, and the Sirius for the VS. The Blitz and the Sirius are your high-capacity SMGs that sacrifice total damage output for more flexibility, but the Armistice is the TR's low-capacity version with a higher rate of fire. Even though I say low-capacity though, its magazine is still larger than the low-capacity NC and VS versions, and the weapon is all around much easier to make use of than the slightly larger magazined Hailstorm. SMGs are great for close quarters combat, but a lot of times they don't have enough reach to be effective in many different situations. Because closing the gap is generally more difficult to do unless you're playing an infiltrator, unless you're playing a light assault, and as a newer player that can be difficult regardless. So we also want to unlock close quarters carbines and assault rifles. But for the carbines, which your light assault and engineer classes have access to, I would recommend the Serpent or the VX6 Tac 7 for the VS and the GD7F for the NC. Now the VS Serpent has more punishing reloads, which is far from ideal, but it's also less expensive, and it's good for getting at least one kill before you go down. If you do have these certifications though, I would recommend getting the VX6 Tac 7 over it, because it's all around easier to handle and gives you a bit more room to grow as a player. The Terran Republic gets the Track 5 by default, which is already a high rate of fire, very competitive weapon in close quarters, and while there are plenty of other good weapons for that role, you're better off saving your certifications until you get bored with it. For combat medics which have access to assault rifles, the HV-45 for the VS and the GR-22 for the NC are both good, relatively inexpensive options for close quarters. Again, the TR do have a nice starter weapon that's very competitive up close, so no need to invest here as a newer player. And the reason that we even mention close quarters weapons at all is that most of the battles on Planetside 2 eventually boil down to indoor fights where these sorts of weapons are useful, because that's where the capture points are. By default, you get a shotgun, but shotguns aren't very useful unless you're extremely close to your targets, and the words indoors and extremely close don't always go hand in hand. 
More often than not, you'll be fighting from two sides of a staircase, or two sides of a hallway, or across the room from one another. And those are all situations where shotguns just aren't good enough, but a CQC automatic weapon is very suitable. Also, higher rate of fire weapons are all around easier for newer players to use because you can aim at the body and just overpower a target through sheer damage output. If you have really good aim, then that's when other weapons with lower rate of fire and better accuracy start to become more viable. But generally speaking, new players don't have really good aim. So what these weapons do for you is give you a flat advantage against players that are on your same skill level, and there are plenty of those types of targets in the game. The last recommendation that I want to offer is for replacing the new conglomerate's NC6 Gauss Saw, and that's the Heavy Assault default weapon. When you can, go ahead and unlock the GD22S, which is pretty inexpensive for how helpful it'll be. The Gauss Saw is a terrible weapon to learn on because it punishes you in a whole bunch of different ways, be it through heavy recoil, low rate of fire, or an extremely long reload. The VS and TR have access to the Orion and the T9 Carve respectively, and both of these weapons are great for newer players and veteran players alike. But that's about all I have for you in this guide. Remember that we wanted to serve three purposes with this short video. The first is to give players weapons that they can use easily. The second is to allow them to fill a role or otherwise change a situation that they would not have been able to before. And the third is to try and spend as little certifications doing so as we could. There are plenty of great weapons out there that are a lot of fun to use, but again, I want to reiterate, don't make grinding for weapons a focus, at least not until you've got your classes in good condition through suit, ability, and tool slot upgrades. Those are all pretty inexpensive and are more game-changing than most weapon purchases that you can make. If this video has been interesting, helpful, or entertaining, please feel free to like, subscribe, tell your friends about the channel, and if you want to let me know what you think about these recommendations, or if you have some of your own, go ahead and leave those thoughts in the comment section down below. Thanks very much, folks. We're all signing off.